Do you struggle with knowing where to start with photo image editing? How do you figure out which parts of your image to adjust? What to do? And how far to go? In this video, I'm going to show you my pro upside down trick to help you solve these problems. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. I teach beginning and intermediate photographers like you how to improve your photography from capture and camera all the way through to the editing process. So this is a tip that you can apply not only to your image editing, but when you're actually out doing photography as well. So let's get started. Before we get started, I want to preface this by saying that it doesn't matter which software you use to do your photo editing. These tips that I'm going to give you will apply to any program. So if you're using Lightroom, Luminar, On One Photo Raw, or something else, you can use this trick. This is how it works. Here is a straight out of camera image that I took in the desert. When you look at it right side up, because you're the photographer, you know what the subject was and what you were taking a picture of. But a viewer, somebody who's never seen this scene before, looks at your image differently. Let's look at the image upside down and I'll show you what I mean. Now when you look at the image, where does your eye go? I recommend viewing this video full screen and stand back a little bit and squint your eyes at the screen. Your eyes will probably go to this bright area here, which is now in the upper right, around all the spines on the cactus, and then probably to some of these bright areas in the background. It might even go to this stripe or spike that's in the foreground here, which is now in the upper left corner. Your eyes are naturally drawn to four different elements in an image. The areas of greatest brightness, this part here, areas with high contrast, like the spikes around the cactus, everything that is sharp in the image, so the cactus, and this part here in the upper left, and areas of bright or intense color. So that's the yellow straw and in the background here. So even though the background is fairly blurry and out of focus, your eyes will go there because of the contrast and the bright spots and the yellow color. Your eyes are also particularly more drawn to warm colors like yellow, orange, and red than they are to cool colors like blue and green. So the cactus being green is struggling to get attention here. Now I want to show you the finished edited image, but let's look at it upside down as well. Can you see how the editing that I've done on this image is taking care of all of the areas that I just pointed out that are grabbing attention that aren't the cactus? The cactus has been brightened and the color intensified and everything else has been darkened and the contrast lowered. Now let's look at it right side up. Your eye should go directly to the cactus and nothing else if I've done my job correctly. Here's another image I took in Cuba. The laundry on the balconies grabbed my attention, but let's look at it upside down. Where does your eye go now? Unfortunately, because the bright blown out sky, which is now in the bottom left corner, it is grabbing attention away from the laundry. It is the brightest thing in the picture and your eye goes directly there. I solved this problem by doing a sky replacement. Notice now that your eye should go to the laundry here and over here. Remember I said your eye is drawn to contrast and warm colors? Look what's happening here. The bright orange stick and the contrast of the dark and the light will draw your eye, as well as this laundry, which is now the brightest thing in the picture. So your eye will go back and forth between these two spots. Looking at it right side up, can you see how your eye will then flow from one balcony to the other and it doesn't even go to the sky now? So sometimes you have to get creative with your editing. I replaced the sky on this one using Luminar Neo. I took this image in Kyoto, Japan because what attracted me was the light coming across the doors on the pagoda. 
But when we look at the image upside down, you see that there's a lot going on. So thinking about those four elements again that draw the viewer's attention, bright color, so that's these yellow bits of the tree, but not only here, this part as well, areas of sharpness and contrast. So there are a lot of detailed, sharp things in the foreground, including these rocks and this sort of barren bush that are taking attention. And even the large bright area of the roof. So how did I solve these issues? I cropped in a little bit on the image and darkened some of the areas where I didn't want the viewer's eye to go. When we look at the image right side up, you can see that your eye goes directly to this tree and the light on the door, which was my ultimate goal. You can also see that this bush has been darkened significantly to draw less attention, as well as these foreground elements. I could probably take this one a little bit farther and darken these bits under the pagoda here, as well as this part of the deck. So notice when we look at it upside down, your eye does go here and to this part of the tree trunk. So I could probably go a little bit farther on the editing on this one. I have a quick question for you. Are you starting to see how this upside down trick can be really useful when you're doing your photo editing? Just a quick little trivia bit for you. I developed this technique back in the day when I was doing my retouching by hand with a small paintbrush and dyes. I was making competition prints that would be really heavily scrutinized by the judges. So I would put my print upside down, back away from it a little bit, squint my eyes, and then wherever my eye went, that's the part that I went back and retouched. Now I've just applied this same trick and technique to digital photo editing. Here's another image from Japan. It's a very famous temple in Kyoto, and I wanted to photograph it at blue hour. When we look at it upside down, your eye definitely goes to the temple because of the contrast against the blue sky. But there's also a few distractions taking your eye away from the temple. Over here on the right, currently, these bright spots on this fence. All of the lamps here on the building, and particularly this one in the middle here. I personally don't mind the one with the flare because it's actually kind of pointing to the temple. And for me, it works and mirrors the shape of the temple. To solve some of those issues, I did a crop again and darkened this part of the image significantly, as well as these lights here. Let's look at it right side up. Can you see this spot on the left now? Doesn't even get your attention at all. It's darkened to the point of disappearing. I also decided that the sky wasn't interesting enough so I swapped it out with a starry sky using Luminar. Yet another Japanese temple, this time in Tokyo. These lanterns caught my attention and I took this image. But when we look at it upside down, where does your eye go? Remember the four things that draw your attention. Brightness, so it's going to the spotlight here, as well as this sun flare or light flare in the current lower left corner but it's also going to some of the highlights on these beams here. I solved this one again by doing a crop to get rid of that light here and darkened the whole image. I included the flare because I do think it points the eye into the image. And when we look at it right side up, it's highlighting the writing on this lantern and sort of pointing you into the scene to view this lantern. So remember, you can use this trick when you're photographing as well. When I look at the original image again, could I have solved this problem by potentially moving where I was standing or taking a higher or lower camera angle? Possibly. So perhaps I need to take my own advice and look at the image upside down in the camera as well. This is a subject that's not moving and you could take as many photos as necessary to get the perfect shot. I have one last image to show you, but make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to show you how I process this image to get the finished version. I seem to be sensing a Japan theme today. They just happen to be images that worked for this example. Once again, another tempo. 
There's lots of things going on in this image and it's quite busy. But what attracted me was the writing and the moss on this part of the temple. But when we look at it upside down, can you see where the eye is being drawn and why? Your eye goes to these columns here because there's contrast and brightness. Your eye will be drawn to this, which is currently the upper right corner because of the color. You'll also be drawn to the brightest part of the moss here on this little ledge and various other little hot spots. So let's take a look at what I did to edit this one. This is basically the finished version, but I took it a step farther yet. So where does your eye go now? It goes directly to this area because all of the four elements are there. It's in sharp focus, it's got bright intense color, it's got contrast and bright areas. With a few exceptions, my eye goes to this leaf right here and these white spots on the wall, as well as this leaf here down in the bottom and this corner. So I took this one a step farther yet. You can see that I got rid of all of those little distractions by doing some cloning. So remember, it's not just tone control you want to do, but the full meal deal. So consider cloning some things out as necessary as well. Okay, as promised, I'm going to show you how I will edit this image. The first thing I wanna do is crop it because there's a lot of busyness going on and I wanna simplify a little bit. So I'm using Lightroom to edit, but my original edit was actually done using Luminar AI. So you can use whatever software you choose. It's the techniques that I want you to be aware of. So I'm gonna come in a little bit on this side so I just have one column. And I'm looking at edges of things. I'm very particular about edges. So I wanna make sure that I either come in to the corner of this uh, brick wall here or leave enough space. So I'm gonna come in just to touch the corner. And you'll notice that I've also straightened it because it was a little bit crooked. And I think that's fairly close. After I've done cropping, I usually choose a different camera profile. I shoot Fuji, so I usually use Provia or Astia. Then I do my basic panel edits, including adjusting the whites and the blacks. If you're not familiar with this little trick, I have a video on using the basic panel in Lightroom. There's a link to that video in the description area below. I'm gonna warm it up a tiny little bit. The first thing I'm gonna do is just add a quick vignette using a preset. This is in my Lightroom preset pack. There's a link to that in the description area below as well. Then I'm gonna add some local adjustments using the masking tools in Lightroom. And I'm gonna start with a radial gradient because I want to darken everything except this area here. So I'm gonna select the area that I wanna keep brighter and then just invert it so that I have the outside. Let me make sure it's feathered a little better. Then I'm going to lower the highlights to bring the highlights down. You can see that that is affecting the outer areas and darken. And I might even do things like lower the clarity and the texture, because remember one of the elements that draws your eye is sharpness. So if I can lower the sharpness on those a little bit, that will help as well. And even saturation. We're getting pretty close. I'm gonna move this over a little bit more this way. Then I'm gonna add a second one to darken this edge using a linear gradient. because I really wanna get this bottom corner Again, I'm gonna darken, and we're gonna go quite extreme. And I'm gonna do the same here. So see, everything I'm doing is going back to looking at that image upside down and remembering, okay, which of the things were drawing my eye. So I'm editing and darkening those areas. Then I'm gonna use the clone and heal tool to get rid of some of these bright spots. 
I did another video on using the cloning and healing tool to darken things and not necessarily remove them. There's a link to that video in the description below as well. So you notice I'm just sort of painting over these spots really quickly. I'm not doing a perfect job. If I wanted to do a perfect job, I would take it to Photoshop, to be honest. I just want to minimize the brightness of these areas. I'm going to do a few more spots, so I'm going to work in hyper mode and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I've done all the cloning. Let me turn it off so you can see what I've done. Can you see the difference it makes with all the spots that are grabbing attention? These are the kind of attention to detail things that will take your images from good to great. And I think I'm gonna go with an even darker vignette. I'll just adjust my radial and my gradient filters a little bit to darken this corner even more. So it's a really dramatic edit and a dramatic image. If you're using something like Lightroom or Luminar that has a lights out mode like this, I'm using the keyboard shortcut L on Lightroom. I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts and the one for Lightroom to lights out is L. If you wanna download a keyboard shortcuts PDF for your favorite software, we have one for Lightroom, Luminar AI, Luminar Neo, and Photoshop. The links for those are in the description area below. Now let's look at the before. See all the little spots and bright areas? And after. Does your eye go directly to that writing and the mossy wall? I hope so. Because it will mean that I've done my job well in terms of editing and teaching you my upside down trick. If you enjoyed this little hack and you want some more photo editing tricks, watch one of the videos on the screen now. Making a custom face vignette or the dodge and burn hack for Luminar Neo. Please give this video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that notifications button so you don't miss any new videos.